every good teacher didn't teach me anything new yeah he taught me how to teach myself it is said that knowledge uh, is always constant over time okay it can be explained differently yeah. with different contexts of time but Makes the premise sense. of knowledge will never change the more open minded you are without crystallizing your judgment about anything the more intense life experience you can get mind is a fickle monkey yeah it will never let you live in the present whereas which is the most important part that you should you should be in the present it will either take you to the past giving you all sorts of remorseful reasons of life yeah or it will take you to the future giving you enough anxiety to yeah. get your breath altered hey everyone welcome back to the fun indian guy podcast on today's podcast we have a guest so you have to listen to two people and not really me all the time <laughs> because you might be tired of me but anyway let's welcome mr not mr doctor Rohan Shetty so he's a scientist in landscape ecology he is also studying vedas so basically he's also studying sanskrit because you need sanskrit kind of to study and understand vedas he's also into music for music he's on <laughs> he's also into music photography life in general yeah. he he's in a lot of things and he's a very interesting person and that's why he's here uh, because he's interesting <laughs> no, that's not a benchmark to be here, but like <laughs> So he's a really good friend of mine and we have That's long right. conversations on different topics all the time which are super amazing and they are 5 hours podcast each so i was like let's put microphone in front of us camera and lights so we kind of document it and spread the value anyway so that's why he he is here and now we're going to just roll the intro and talk about things but before that i'm going to explain you what we are talking about today uh we are basically talking about his journey what he studied and how he went about things because i'm really interested interested in his approach towards learning and not the learning itself uh other than that we are talking about journaling which is a hip topic of 2019 and we are kind of giving a perspective from a yogi or a yogic studies towards journaling itself then we are talking about breath talking about personal growth in some way getting yeah. your attention right and We are talking about a lot of things, so stay tuned, and it's gonna be fun for sure. Because I'm I'm kind of recording this intro afterwards, so I already know what was the podcast about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's all. Let's let's roll the intro. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Suyog, also known as the Fun Indian Guy. I'm a designer, musician, filmmaker and a mechanical engineer. I'm from India and currently I'm chilling around, traveling around, working around, roaming around, having fun around Europe and this is my podcast. The Fun Indian Guy podcast. So, today on today's podcast we have Rohan here. Uh let's welcome him. You saw him in in the intro but Now let's let's begin the actual discussion. First of all, thank you for coming here. Uh, it means a lot taking out time for the stuff we are doing. Uh I would like you to tell everybody what you are up to or what all the things you are doing in your life or what you have done more of like highlights about stuff uh, which is happening or going on. Um it's a weird mix of things that I'm made of that I can say. Uh it's a um uh, it's a misfit of puzzles but it fits well together in the end so okay. um uh maybe i'll just start from the very current topic i am um, i just finished my research in um ecosystem dynamics and largely i was trying to understand how vegetation is responding to climate change in the arctic okay so that's my academic focus of research yeah. um on a slightly deeper note what really uh, kicks me about my research is how can we understand change okay. change i think is the basis of life yeah we are undergoing a change constantly so if you understand change you evolve yeah and that's the best way of life to evolve yes. so um that's the academic part of it mm-hmm. um the same change i also um live as a lifestyle okay i try to be conscious about it over every second um yoga is a very important part of my life mm-hmm. um it's it's always about an inward and outward journey that simultaneously goes together okay so um just the way i'm mathematically modeling changes outside in the environment okay i'm um, trying to be aware of every second of what is happening to my own mm-hmm. being what is happening to my own life force what is happening to my own career 
what is happening to my own being in a very personalized setting. Yeah. So um, I've been trying to research um, different paths of introspection, yoga being the most prominent one. Okay. Uh, and it's an enlightenment technology, which is a few thousand years old, very well tested by many, yeah. many people. <laughs> so uh, yes, that's a very important part of my life. Um, the third part is um, uh, I'm working as um, in the capacity of um, a vice president um, at an NGO in India. It's okay. known as um, the Tribal Men's and Nurturing Program, okay. which looks at identifying giftedness in um, students from underprivileged communities okay. uh, um, in the state of Maharashtra in India. Yeah. And apart from that, um, I'm a, a, a passionate student of mm -hmm. uh, Drupad, which is a form of Indian classical music. Yes, nice. Interesting. So the thing is, I, I met him actually during the Ganpati festival, which was happening in Berlin. And then I started talking to him and then the discussions were pretty interesting. And then we kept meeting, like we met, I guess, four or five times after yeah. that. And every time we were sitting together, we were having like amazing conversation. Also, his wife is in the studio. <laughs> Can you give a shout out? Hi. <laughs> first time we are having like audience in, in, in the studio. It's not the studio, it's my bedroom, but still first time we are having audience while the podcast is going on. So I met him and every time we were meeting, we were talking about very interesting topics like be it Sanskrit, Vedas or the PhD things he's going like doing about like studying and ecology, farming, then music, filmmaking. He's also a photographer. So all those things we were talking a lot about and then I realized like I should get him on the podcast because the things he's saying is very interesting and I think it's valuable for everybody of us, like every one of us. So even if we listen to what he's saying and start asking questions in our life or in our context, I think it's very valuable. And that's why I really wanted you to come here. But at the same time, he's full of knowledge, full of information. So we are going to kind of touch different topics in coming months and not in the first podcast. The first podcast is more about the overview and catching up or just introducing people to you. So that's very interesting. I, I would like you to also explain us or tell us in more simplified way. What is your PhD is all about? Like I know it because we have discussed this. Why is my okay? I know this because we have discussed this earlier, but in, in <coughs> simple way, uh, how, how could you put it? Okay. Um, so in very simplest terms, uh, what ecosystem dynamics means is um, in the environment or generally no individual component is really individual. Mm -hmm. We are all dependent on each other. Yeah. We, we breathe the same air that is flowing around. We are exposed to the same sunlight mm -hmm. that is around. So environment as such is always an integrative process of different processes. Mm -hmm. So it's an array of processes that connects everything which is so-called individual yeah. into a um, much more of a communal setting. Okay. So say for instance, a set of trees. Mm -hmm. These trees are never individual units. Okay. A tree is always responding to sunlight, it is responding to temperature, it is responding to um, amount of groundwater that is available. Yeah. So a tree is always responding to a set of um, climatic and uh, geo, um, geological settings mm -hmm. that um, it is standing on. So when we say ecosystem dynamics, we are trying to compute different processes and their interrelations with each other. Okay. So in short, there's a change that is happening all the time mm -hmm. and we are responding to this change. Yeah. So if we try to con if we try to quantify this response, mm -hmm. we can get an idea about which way these changes are going to head. Okay. So in mathematical terms, all of these changes are ranked yeah. at, as different indices in terms of time, in terms of growth, in terms of how much change has occurred in certain kind of vegetation over time. Okay. And then we can see which way this ecosystem is going to head. Okay. So it is, uh, all of these predictions, they might not always be accurate, yeah. but nonetheless, they are good enough to raise a flag about which way are we heading. Okay. So we are just looking at change over time yeah. in an Arctic setting. Mm -hmm. um, Northern Arctic tundra is where I did most of my research. Okay, interesting. My uh, research sites were in um, the polar, the northern and the uh, southern Ural mountains in okay. Russia. And uh, totally I worked with uh, data sets uh, that came from all across the circumpolar Arctic. So from Alaska, okay. Norway, Finland, Greenland, uh, Northern Germany uh, and Sweden. Yeah. So uh, yes, uh, 
that is what my PhD focused on. Okay, that that's very interesting. But at any point during your studies or during your research process or when you were traveling to get your data or to study whatever was happening, did you feel like you are coming across so many good insights and inputs that we should tell like the normal people, not the academic people who really know the like we which have good amount of knowledge about the things going on, but in day to day life aspect about like common people like did you have that moment where you are like oh this is very interesting i can translate this information to the people who are who are more able to understand like in the terms where they can understand and they can apply in order to make better change or in order to change however sure change the change the way we are dealing with things these days sure certainly um an important aspect of any data is always about predictions. Mm -hmm. Which way are we heading, as I said. Yeah. So, um, just the way we model ecosystems, mm -hmm. we all are a part of a larger data set anyways. Yeah. We are living data. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are agents of change. We are also oddities of change. Yeah. So, we are a point in timeline that by our choices right now are going to design our future okay so certainly i feel throughout this journey may it be sampling in the extreme arctic sites which yeah. is kind of a very beautiful and uh, very um, uh, adventurous yeah. journey uh, because you are undergoing uh, a, a strenuous physical life yeah at the same time you're very excited about it because it is just adding to your research it is uh, it is an outward and an inward journey True. So, yes, definitely there were a lot of points that I thought I could share. One of the most important being, uh, we hear um, the word sustainability yeah. that comes stapled with environment all the time. True. So, many times people um, address this issue in a very policy-based way and okay. they think uh, it's only an administrative task. But as I said, as all of us are little data points, if we change our consumption patterns, yeah. if we look at... Uh, life in a higher resolution of things yeah. we will kind of understand that we don't need a lot of things to be content and happy mm. so if our consumption patterns change certainly will lead a much more meaningful life yeah. than uh, the so called material rush that we are going through right true, now true true this this ideology also somehow matches with the <coughs> minimalism and all those things i had already talked about like last year when I, as I said, I watched this documentary and I was really inspired by it, which somehow it's connected to also that like consumption and materialism and how people are uh, going more towards buying stuff and sto stocking them all the time without knowing the importance of it and how it is causing uh, ill effects. That's, that's very interesting. So this is your PhD part and this is what academically you have been doing. But then there is Vedas and Sanskrit and all Correct. that zone. When, when did it start and how, how, how did it start? Um, it, it started, I guess, uh, quite a few years back. It's been more than 15 years that I've been trying to study myself. Okay. Uh, uh, and I was very fortunate to get many really good gurus in my life mm -hmm. who, uh, who pointed me towards uh, a more and more introspective path. Yeah. Um, a small note over there uh, is that every good teacher didn't teach me anything new. Yeah. He taught me how to teach myself. Oh, interesting. Because every, any good teacher will tell you that I cannot give you knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is a life experience that you will get by yourself. Yeah. But this teacher every time taught me to be open enough mm -hmm. to take a new life experience. In okay. Without yeah. judging it, looking at it as a process. Mm. Just to, to be a part of it, to consume it entirely and then extract knowledge out of it. Okay. So, one of the basic premises of the Vedas is, Vedas are not books. They are not uh, big volumes of just written knowledge somewhere. Mm -hmm. They are timeless. They, um, it is said that knowledge uh, is always constant over time. Okay. It can be explained differently yeah. with different contexts of time. But Makes the premise sense. of knowledge will never change. Yeah. So, similarly, every being, may it be his consumption patterns, may it be his approach of life, the more open-minded you are, without crystallizing your judgment about anything, the more intense life experience you can get out okay. of every little thing. Yes. So that is the basic premise of Vedas. Okay. 
um, that's that's I, can you repeat what you said again like the sure <laughs> because it was really interesting <laughs> maybe if i have to encapsulate uh, the entire uh, concept yeah the vedas start with this premise of atatho brahma jignasa mm-hmm. which which means when there is a life force which is curious enough to understand or which is really curious to know how is this cosmos working mm-hmm. that is the point of start for vedas yeah. atato brahma jignasa okay. once you have curiosity knowledge is going to follow yeah so for any being who wants to study his own journey what is the substance of me mm-hmm. in any context may it be career may it be your passion your yeah. hobby your uh your sadness your depressions whatever it is yeah but what is the substance mm-hmm. this life experience is how is it adding to my being because every life experience is knowledge yeah so once curiosity kicks in how does the cosmos work this kicks in okay so that is what i mean yeah so vedas or the study of self mm-hmm. is it's not about books of course there are scriptures uh there are vedic texts which yeah. will if you raise a question to it it will give you an answer but it's a protocol mm-hmm. how do you bring this protocol in your life is the key aspect of it. yes so this is very interesting to me so vedas is basically uh <coughs> nothing about what's written in the book but it's more about how you approach knowledge in a sense or how you ask questions about yes. anything which is happening around you Yes. Uh the core of it is to understand what you really want or what it is all about. Like it's both. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you are a part of the cosmos. Mm-hmm. At the same time, the cosmos is also a part of you. Okay. So what is your role? What does human life yeah. or a human birth in itself mean? Yeah. Um it is I'm not differentiating humans from any other animal species. Mm-hmm. uh because cosmos does not differentiate it but okay. just a very interesting aspect of human life is the sense of empathy yeah sympathy yes uh in natural cycles we never see the sense of empathy with animals when they are hungry they are going to hunt true which is correct which is how nature works yeah but it is said that uh after your being or after your uh jeeva uh travels through 86 lakh species mm-hmm. 86 lakh lives and deaths do you get one human birth what it really means in yeah. its in its essence is when you are sensitive to death when you are sensitive to pain and suffering yeah. you will get the sense of empathy yeah so it has taken you a long journey to get to this true so it is human birth is very special yeah so if you have to contextualize it it is the best time when you get a chance to make differences to your life force yeah and you can only make a difference when you are sentient when you are conscious about your being and also of other beings which are around you yes wow and this is what really contextualizes what is your role in the grand scheme of things mm-hmm. as you are a part of the grand scheme of things whether you are conscious of it or not is a different question but you are a part of it nonetheless yeah. vedas will point what is your dharma now don't please uh, interpret the word dharma as religion okay. what is your role yeah. what is the righteous role which is going to give you knowledge okay. is what vedas will tell you okay well that's 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 nice and but there's too many questions are opening up because of this conversation uh how would you suggest somebody who is really new to all all of this like it's, it it has been there for a long time but to <coughs> convert this knowledge in more uh digestible way for example when it comes to science we you can have a phd in a science but at the same time you have school level science where you try to get the same concept on very simple level Correct. so kids can understand so i think through this knowledge whatever we are discussing it's it's i guess it's a complete big universe but how one should step into it to start learning it or understanding it because i think once you start questioning there are too many questions around it so what will be the simplest entry point to be curious about this um as my teacher would always call it it's right under your nose <laughs> what it means is one of the best things is uh you will start gaining information from outside yeah but knowledge will always come from inside mm-hmm. so if you have to start with any kind of study maybe the vedas yoga whatever it is start with examining yourself yeah the best thing to examine yourself which is the key to any life experience is your breath okay 
just imagine an intense life experience hmm. maybe you being angry you being sad you being very happy yeah. can you imagine yourself laughing without altering your breath try to laugh without a... <laughs> no it's difficult But you're already breathing yeah. a bit fast or try to imagine yourself being sad going mm. <laughs> you're already altering your breath true so what is a life experience you are more aware of a life experience once it starts becoming intense mm-hmm. so once you are intense your breath is going to change even if you're angry you're just going to go yeah so breath is the first response it's a first biophysical response or yeah. a biopsyche is a, in a way of its kind that your body is going to respond to once your life experience is enhancing yeah so just the other way around if you are conscious of your breath yeah. if you are just paying attention to your life force mm-hmm. you will already see that your life experience even with a simple breath has intensified yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, as somebody has once quoted zindagi lambi nahi badi honi chahiye yeah what yeah. it really means is that if every breath if every breath is going to make you blissful if yeah. if it's going to make you ecstatic if it's going to make you joyous yeah, yeah. then your meaning of life is much more full true yes so that is where i would see it to be an entry point yeah reading through the scriptures reading through the actual mantras and sutras of the vedas is important it yeah. is an important protocol set up by many sages by many rishis yeah who have undergone the same process of self examination hmm. um my entry point into it was that i would question everything i did yeah made be a single breath or me having tea or me having food or me walking or me doing anything that exactly who is doing this yes in a hyper practical way i realized or oh, over oh, oh, questioning myself again and again and again is that of maybe 9 out of 10 of my answers i realized that my body is doing things yeah see in a in a very grammatical way through different languages when we introduce ourselves how do we introduce ourselves yeah. hi my name is rohan yes you never say hi this body rohan true but in in a practical yeah. sense your body is called rohan isn't it you are not called rohan because yeah. if you are if you are naming yourself you are something different from the name yeah the same way you say this is my shirt this is my trouser this is my mic you will say this is my body yeah so you are not the shirt you are not the mic yeah you are not the pant yeah. you the same way you are not the body you are something different from the body and so you say this is my body yeah true so really 9 out of 10 things all the identity that you carry around yourself yeah. who is you and who is the identity is where i would start as an entry point okay when this question becomes a part of your lifestyle yeah your lifestyle will start altering itself in its own course yeah because then you will start differentiating what is your choice and what is the choice that your physical needs are pushing you to make yes 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 very interesting i would like to ask you more you already talked about it but when you see say that breath is kind of indicator of your emotional state of or whatever your psychological state is at at the moment for example you are breathing faster maybe you are fearful about something or scared is you said it's also other way around when you start uh, putting attention to you to the breathing itself you are more aware about what's happening around and stuff like that but is it also in a way like if i start breathing faster that i might get excited or it does does it also work the other way that i kind of manipulate my breathing in order to get the respective experience out of it if you just start breathing faster you will get excited <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> see um an important aspect again uh any action mm-hmm. is not driven by breath it is only facilitated by breath okay any action is always driven by intention okay yeah so intention is going to decide your breath yeah but if your intention is just pure attention wherever your intention you want to take can be very focused true yeah so when you are aware of your breath you are just more aware of your present time yes something very interesting about the mind that i've come across as an experience and i'm and i'm pretty sure everybody will vouch for this is 
mind is a mind is a fickle monkey yeah it will never let you live in the present whereas which is the most important part that you should you should be in the present it will either take you to the past giving you all sorts of remorseful reasons of life yeah or it will take you to the future giving you enough anxiety to yeah. get your breath altered so that's it from the part 1 of this podcast this is not it actually we going to have one more part of this same podcast where we are talking and discussing some deep topics amazing things so stay tuned and we'll see you soon the fun engine guy podcast